On this week's boiler tip, we're going to take a look at inverted bucket traps, continuing our series. Um, inverted bucket trap is a very common trap. It's quite popular. Um, the mechanism by which it functions is exactly what it sounds like, an inverted bucket. And here I have one, for example. Um, the inlet of the trap enters into the inverted bucket. So the inverted bucket, if it has condensate entering, the condensate is simply going to flow up and out the seat of the trap. When the condensate is removed to a certain extent, steam will begin to enter the trap. And that steam is going to make that internal bucket buoyant. And so that buoyancy will raise the bucket and close off the valve at the top. So that's basically the cycling operation of the inverted bucket that you're seeing is the steam opening and closing the bucket to allow condensate to leave. Now, the biggest downside to this trap is its ability to remove air. Um, because air is buoyant like steam, it's going to tend to elevate the bucket and close the trap. So our mechanism for air removal is this fixed vent orifice in the top of the bucket. And if we take a close look at the trap in operation, we can see steam escaping through that orifice. One application where this trap is really successful is main steam distribution drip legs. And the reason it's successful is because it doesn't have a lot of air to remove. If that header stays full of steam, the air venting capability is not as big of a deal. Um, I wouldn't want to use it in a kettle or an application where I'm shutting off the process and restarting it daily or even multiple times a day because I can have quite a lag for all the air to escape through the vent. 